like to talk about this group of lithographs by um, Nathan Oliveira. So it's kind of an interesting transitional figure between uh, the Tebow and the Arneson. Um, I chose them for a number of reasons. Uh, one thing being that they're inspired by uh, the work of Edgar Allan Poe. And I've always been sort of someone who went back and forth between literary and uh, uh, visual arts. Um, and I, I, it's especially impressive. If you think about verbal and visual, you look at these and you say it's rather hard to figure out how you would describe them in words. They, uh, they definitely go beyond the, uh, the uh, literal in their uh, inspiration. And that's sort of interesting if you're aware of David Olivera's general work of his uh, you know, sort of iconic uh, images of the isolated figure. And um, these come at a kind of hiatus in that uh, uh, oil painting uh, tradition that he was working in. And uh, for about a year, he, he worked uh, solely with lithography. And he had chosen to work with Edgar Allan Poe because he had a long interest in him since he was a kid. I too. Yeah, my parents gave me these Edgar Allan Poe books that were scary and weird, you know, when I was a kid. And then you read his poetry and everything. It's very seductive, psychologically intense. And uh, Oliveira uh, went to work with these things. He had uh, worked a long time with printmaking. At that time, he had started the printmaking program at Stanford University. So he had a great shop over there. And, and lithography was kind of making a comeback. Lithography had almost just disappeared. Um, you know, we still have here at Davis, we're very fortunate to have these huge stones. And so you can imagine these were made on um, stones. And each one, according to the information I have, that he made hundreds of uh, preparatory prints with these. And then he would go back and work on the stone some more and, and erase or add to it. So they were generated over a long period of time during this year. And one can imagine maybe working from one to another. I don't know if he worked on them strictly in succession or if he went back and forth from one to the other. But um, they. Um, Mark a sort of mastery. Uh, there was some uh, talk last night about uh, California artists being these kind of clodhoppers who, who try to do something, you know. And when I look at uh, Oliveira's work, one gets a sense of a kind of mastery, but it's not a mastery of, of traditional technique in the sense that you can see in Tebow with his training and illustration had learned you know, how you make a shadow and how you do the highlights and everything. Uh, Oliveira comes from a, a, a different tradition, one that has more links to European uh, tradition, I think. Um, where it's more a mastery of process. He's like a, an artist who can take materials and turn them into something uh, without necessarily having an image in mind uh, when he starts. And um, so in that sense, I think he, well, Thibaut, of course, relates to the European tradition as well. It's a tradition of uh, popular culture. Um, I think of um, Olivera maybe connected to Dieter Horn, who was very influenced by Matisse and French art. So there's this group of California artists who are very, interested in jumping across to the uh, opposite coast across the Atlantic. Um, another thing that's uh, worth thinking about with these is um, at the time, uh, at this hiatus in his work, uh, Oliveira had been sort of disconcerted. He came out of the abstract expressionist tradition, really, and had been identified with these pictures of the, of the figure. And this was a period of pop art, which uh, was very disconcerting for a lot of the artists who came out of that generation, uh, deeply engaged with the process and this this sense of how you bring images out of your uh, subconscious or out of some uh, process of working where the pop artist is all just right there. And uh, for Wayne Thiebaud, that proved to kind of catapulted him forward because of his interesting mixture of, of traditions that he was drawing upon. For Oliveira and other artists, it provoked this kind of period of soul searching and uh, I think he moved into this particular kind of uh, work simply because uh, it, it represented a period of reflection. And, um, in the context of this, I think there's also some lithographs he did uh, around this time of, of human heads that maybe link it more into his other work with the figure. Um, but they all have, have European roots. And first of all, we think, well, Edgar Allan Poe, he's kind of an archetypal American uh, writer. Um, and uh, I have a little quote, actually, from Walt Whitman, who uh, wrote about uh, wrote about Poe, saying Poe's verses illustrate an intense faculty for technical and abstract beauty with the rhyming art to excess, an incorrigible propensity towards nocturnal themes, 
a demoniac undertone behind every page. There is an indescribable magnetism about the poet's life and reminiscences, as well as the poems. So Whitman certainly got the idea from Poe, who had died sometime before he was um, in his prime. And uh, yet the um, great appreciators of Poe were in France at that time. There were poets like Mallarmé and Baudelaire who were, um, were very taken by and tried to translate Poe's poetry and uh, by visual artists. Manet uh, famously made a series of lithographs illustrating Poe's poem, The Raven. And then after that, Odilon Redon was very inspired by Poe and went even farther where Manet's images look rather literal and kind of illustrational in the way he makes a picture of a raven, you know, to illustrate the poem, whereas Redon is a visionary, really, and gets more into the spirit of Poe and uh, more in line with the kind of things that I think Oliveira wanted to do. So, uh, so there is this uh, European tradition, also that the heads that, uh, that Oliveira was working on uh, about the same time came out of the work of Eugène Carrière, uh, another symbolist painter in, in France who made these very subtle, uh, almost monochromatic, uh, imagined heads and portraits. So, um, so that's kind of trying to put uh, you know, uh, Oliveira into a context here and then Moving on to Robert Arneson, who comes maybe from a, a different generation, I guess, and uh, takes a much more ironic stance towards this European tradition, uh, although he's obviously very aware of his place as an artist in relation to it. Um, I could read something from Poe, but how am I doing on time? All right? Okay. Then I didn't have to read, I wrote a lot of poems in case I didn't have it. Please. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing I want to mention, after this, he gets involved with birds. He gets a collection of these stuffed Birds of Prey, and he did a series called The Wind Hover, which is based on Jared Manley Hopkins. And um, so from here, there's a certain transformation.